everyone so today we'll be starting with the topic gastritis all right so let's start with the definition of a gastritis uh, gastritis are a group of conditions all right where the stomach lining is inflamed all right so gastritis is a name given to a group of conditions disorders where the lining of the stomach gets inflamed all right now let's come to their etiology all right so there is association with your h pylori all right so an h pylori infection this could be one of the cause the other cause could be any auto immune factors all right so what happens in this is that there are certain auto antibodies which act against your gastric parietal cells all right uh, thirdly we have reflex of the duodenal contents into stomach all right and then we have your chronic hypochromic anemia all right so lastly we also have any associated disease of your stomach and duodenum all right so any of these five conditions could uh, five conditions can be the cause of your gastritis all right now let's come to the classification of your gastritis yeah so gastritis can be of two types there's your type a and then there's your type b all right we'll be starting with your type b gastritis all right all right so what is this type b gastritis it is also known as your h pylori gastritis all right now so h pylori gastritis mainly involves the region of your antral mucosa all right so antral mucosa all right so this region is involved and what happens here is that the h pylori the infection of the h pylori leads to increasing secretion of gastric acid all right so there is increase in secretion of gastric acid which is your hcl yeah and this condition is known as hyper secretory gastritis all right so what route does this condition follow yeah it is usually a fecal oral route all right now now let's look at the we'll do a little bit of microbiology here all right what are the virulence factors of your h pylori all right so this will help us understand the pathogenesis a bit better Right. so we know your h pylori has certain flagellum all right it has your adhesins all right then there are your urease that is released by your h pylori and certain toxins all right now let's study these individually so what does the flagellum help with it helps it helps the h pylori to swim through the mucus all right All right the adhesins help the h pylori to stick to the epithelium yes and the urease what does this do so there's urea so in the presence of urease it gets converted into ammonia and what is ammonia responsible for increase in your ph all right so increase in ph leads to destruction of epithelium all right which leads to your 
gastritis. All right, and the toxin is your COG A. All right, so these were the virulence factors of your H. pylori. Now let's come to the pathogenesis. So, uh, in your H. pylori associated gastritis, we see two path. We'll be discussing two pathogenesis because there are two types of gastritis which are caused by your H. pylori. All right. So, what happens here is your this is your H. pylori. Yeah. So, the first gastritis that we'll be starting is your antral gastritis. All right. Now. What happens here is your food along with H. pylori enters your stomach. All right, so this is your stomach. We have your cardia here, yeah, and this is your antral region. So the food goes in here and it comes here and it starts accumulating here. All right, so this is where your H. pylori comes. Okay, the red is going to signify the H. pylori. Yeah. So now what happens is that there is damage to your epithelial cells. All right. And this causes increase in the local gastrin secretion. Yes. Which leads to your increase in HCL. Yes. And this leads to your antral gastritis. Yeah, now coming to your second gastritis, that is your atrophic gastritis. All right, so what happens here is that there is a long standing case of H. pylori. All right, so what happens is that this is your stomach, here was your antral region, yeah, where the H. pylori infection was situated, and this, so what happens here is that it starts spreading to the body and the fundus. All right, it starts spreading to the body and fundus. And what does this lead to? This leads to your patchy destruction. All right, to epithelium. Yes, and this leads to decrease in your HCL, eventually leading to your atrophic gastritis all right so we studied the two pathogenesis here now let's come to their morphological features and all right now let's come to the morphological features all right let's start with the cross features so what did we study um, what did we read here we saw that there was patchy destruction to the epithelium all right so under cross we see there are ulcerations we see ulcers and two we see patchy destruction to the epithelium all right coming to the microscopy all right so under microscopy we can see your spiral bacteria here so we can what do we see here we see your slender s shaped bacteria all right this we see in your h and e stain all right if it was your grana stain we would see those bacteria as bluish all right and if we used warthin stone stain we would see them as black all right now because this is a chronic inflammatory condition we also see your inflammatory infiltration all right inflammatory cell inf infiltration so we see your what do we see we see neutrophils yeah we see lymphocytes, we see plasma cells, all right? So that was it about the microscopy. Now coming to the investigations, what are the investigations we can do? All right, so we can do your ELISA, PCR, your polymerase chain reaction. Third, we can also do an endoscopy biopsy of the gastric mucosa all right and lastly we can perform a urease breath test 
using C13 or C14. Now, the complications, yeah? What are the complications? There is risk of gastric adenocarcinoma, all right? As well as risk of maltoma. Yeah, now, what are the consequences for a long-term H. pylori gastritis, all right? So, if there's a long-term case, what are the consequences? So, this is how we're going to study it. So, initially, there was a H. pylori infection, all right? Um, after certain months, what happens? Um, we see, you now this infection becomes a chronic H. pylori infection, all right? All right, so here there are asymptomatic infection. Okay, so it can either lead to asymptomatic infection, or what happens is after many years, all right, these are the changes we see. All right, first we saw there was antral gastritis. All right, so in antral gastritis, this could lead to your duodenal or gastric also all right now after that what we'll see is your atrophic gastritis all right this leads to your intestinal metaplasial dysplasia all right now what what do we see here we see metaplasial dysplasia so this has this can lead to a neoplasm, all right? So that is why we see this condition can lead to your gastric carcinoma, all right? And thirdly, it could be your non-atrophic pangastritis, all right? And this leads to your lymphoproliferative disorder, which is your Maltoma. All right. So with that, um, we are done with your type B gastritis, and now we'll be starting your type A gastritis. All right. Now coming to your type A gastritis. Yeah. So this is an autoimmune gastritis. Yes, and mainly involves the body and fundic mucosa. All right, uh, this condition is usually associated along with your other autoimmune diseases. All right, now let's come to its pathogenesis. So what happens in this condition is that your CD4 T cells, all right, uh, they lead to the destruction of your parietal epithelium. Alright, so along with the destruction of parietal epithelium, there are release of two things. Alright, the first is your proteins and second is your H plus, A plus, ATPase. Alright, now because of these two, there is formation of your neo antigens. Yeah, there is neo antigen formation, which stimulates your auto antibody production. So, what do we see here? We see autoantibody production here. Now, this is a type 2 hypersensitivity reaction. Yeah, whereas this destruction of your parietal epithelium is a type 4 hypersensitivity reaction. All right, now these autoantibodies that are released they act against your one parietal cells. All right, and second, Castle's intrinsic factor. All right, and these antibodies can also be seen in your serum. All right, so because of this, it leads to your epithelial destruction. All right, and in the definition, we studied the epithelial destruction mainly involves the body and the fundic mucosa. So this destruction is mainly seen in your body and 
from this. All right. Now, let's come to this characteristic features. All right. So what happens? We see there was destruction of a parietal cells. So one, there is decrease in your parietal cells. Yeah. So cause of this, it is known as atrophic gastritis. All right. Second, there is decrease in your HCL. So there is decrease in your serum pepsin. All right. Thirdly, we see increase in gastric. All right. This leads to your G cell hyperplasia. All right. And lastly, what is we, what we saw here that there was destruction of your castle zetrexic factor. So this leads to decrease in your vitamin B12 absorption, which leads to your pernicious anemia. All right. So in this condition, the patient presents with a history of chronic gastritis. All right. And coming to its morphological features, we see in cross. All right. In your endoscopy these are the changes that we can see firstly in the body it is diffuse all right and there is atrophy all right all right so coming to its microscopy we see your goblet cells here and being an inflammatory condition we see your infiltration of your inflammatory cells all right what are the cells that we see we see your lymphocytes all right, we see your macrophages, yes, and we see your plasma cells. All right, so now let's come to the long term complications. All right, what are the long term complications we see with your type A gastritis? So, firstly, it can lead to your carcinoma, second, we saw that there was your G cell hyperplasia, yeah. So, this can lead to your carcinoids. Alright, and thirdly, it can lead to your maltoma. Alright, so for this, what are the investigations we can do? Yeah, we knew that there were autoantibodies, yeah, against your parietal cells and your castle's intrinsic factor. So, for investigations, we can see look for the serum antibodies all right and the treatment for this condition is your immunosuppressants all right with that we are finishing gastritis we have studied type b gastritis which um, was associated with your h pylori infection and we studied your type a gastritis which is an autoimmune gastritis which is associated with your other autoimmune diseases all right i hope you guys enjoyed the video and thank you for watching